we play the music. George Scotland and Damien Stephen, The Breakfast Show, URN. We play this. DJ! This is URN. The University Radio. Nottingham. It's nine minutes past nine, and this is the Eurovision uh, Song Contest special on URN with me, Damien Stephen. And me, George Scotland. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Fresh, fresh from last week's show, we promised to give you a Eurovision song contest special. A post Eurovision special on Buzzing, Damien. We've watched Eurovision. We're going to be playing um, one of the. We're going to play the winning song from last, from this year, but we're going to be playing the uh, highlights of all the greatest moments of Eurovision over the years. Over Eurovision, sixty-one years of Eurovision history, Damien. And George Scotland is an absolute. Eurovision buff fanatic and I've, known yeah. it, I've known this for a while but now it's finally the two hours where it's going to come out the beast will be the beast broken. will be unleashed yeah. this is making your mind up <laughs> Bucks Fizz Fizz, making your mind up, the Eurovision Song Contest winner from Dublin in 1981, Damien. Absolutely brilliant record there. That was, that was a great opening song. We weren't sure about what to open with, and we picked that, and it's, it was a success. It was a success. I feel Eurovision to the max. To the max, and now we've got to To the about James Max. To the, <laughs> to the He's James. on talk radio, by the way, <laughs> from five to half six every weekday morning. He's not a very nice <laughs> individual, but... <laughs> we'll get we'll plug in a radio station we're not even on anyway oh well, we don't even like either yeah that was uh bucks fizz making your mind up of course cheryl baker and jay aston they did the thing with the velcro where he pulled up the velcro off her yeah uh the, the skirt thing i don't mean right. that that would that would pass these days but w- within 48 hours of ripping the skirts velcro sold out across the country apparently that's a genuine fact and that's where the, that's where the the phenomenon of velcro came <laughs> from was actually from eurovision and bucks fizz oh, i assume so yeah I remember on uh, was watching QI once, and they were talking about uh, Velcro, and apparently the company Velcro said that is actually not the name of the product. It's actually hook and f- hook and loose tape. And then Stephen Fry, <laughs> in a fit of rage, 
tore the Velcro and said, "It's Velcro! It's Velcro!" Because <laughs> it's like it's like you know when the brand yeah. becomes a thing. Like yeah, anyway, you look yeah. a bit, you look a bit like Stephen. Well, you used to in that pro, old profile picture you had where you were praise were you praising the NHS. Oh yeah, that was when I had uh, long hair. Was one of, that was one of my uh, t- one of three lockdown haircuts I had to endure. Yeah, that was, that was when you used to praise the NHS. I was well, <laughs> well, well, it's because we've got a feature coming up on Plank of the Week about NHS. <laughs> We're so indeed, it's yeah. not a slight on the NHS. Yeah, not it's yeah, not something, something odd. Something online. Like Plank of the Week, of course. Fact or fall in, uh, and some great Eurovision music. This is URN. This is URN, and this is Gina G. We have got Gina G. Yes, G- who are just a little bit. Eurovision night. Strange that I've all got the daytime playlist <laughs> and we're not allowed yeah. to swear, and yet there's a Megan the Stallion record that's got the same name as a song we're playing later on in the show. Right, okay, yeah. That's that, strange. Yeah, that is. I don't even know who the hell that is. You seem to be more up to date with rappers than I am. <laughs> yeah, I know, but she's, she's thinking she's a very explicit lyric, so I'm just surprised that that's been allowed. Well, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of these people moan about um, Baby It's Cold Outside, but then explicit lyrics like this are allowed on yeah, the radio. Card- it's just. Cardi- yeah. weird stuff. 
Cognitive dissident? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> anyway yeah, that, uh, Gina G, the first overseas act to represent the UK at Eurovision back in 1996, came sick, was the most successful UK Eurovision entry ever on the US chart, reaching number five on the US Billboard chart, also reached number one in the UK, and was the last Eurovision song, Damien, yeah. to have a number one in the UK. That was, well, that's because that that song was bigger than Eurovision. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it reached it, it, number it, it, one in that whole mid to late nineties yeah. dance thing. And think, it was, yeah, it was just a, it was just a good feel good record. I think it reached number one in about seven countries or something ridiculous. Yeah. That's amazing. And, yeah. and it still plays disco. It's bigger than parties. Eurovision. That song. Yeah, weddings. I yeah. Steve Merchant used to say when he used to DJ for weddings, he used to play it when people got up for the buffet. Because of the lyrics, because of the lyrics, the, well, I just yeah. a, little bit, a little bit more. So more. Yeah. Very very much. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. great record that. Great, great record. So, J- Damien, did you see the Eurovision? Well, I saw bits of it. Um, we've got Plank of the Week. We're talking about <laughs> someone, uh, someone uh, from Eurovision. Uh, Indeed, yeah. The lead singer of Manny Skin. The big, the big take from it is, is that <laughs> Azerbaijan got robbed. Azerbaijan got absolutely <laughs> robbed. So we're going to talk about that. Madahati. That was, uh, but apparently she was a she was a woman who got executed in the first. This is what Charlie was saying. She was like, a, she was a woman who got executed in the First World War, and there was a historical, it was a Russian woman who got. Right. M- Mata Hardy. Well, is this what yeah. the song was about? Yeah, well, I, I assume so. Oh, but, right. so well, it's so a post-Soviet country, isn't it? As my yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't have been under Soviet rule. What was what was in like, the First oh. World War? But yeah, but Mata Hardy, yeah, and it's just she was like the Azerbaijani version of Ariana Grande, and she's just it's just a really. <laughs> Oh, yeah. you, oh, you mean the? I thought you meant the, the historical woman. You, you mean actually? Oh no, yeah, she wasn't. You, si- she wasn't. She this. wasn't singing about herself at Eurovision. No, <laughs> she died in about 1917. So, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, but Azerbaijan was a great, great entry. I don't see how it got 20th. It, got, it came 20th. It came 20th. I was expecting at least a top five. Well, that's the thing. Though. That's one of the big problems of Eurovision is personal biases about the countries do come into it. There, there are personal biases, but we can't. We can't fund. This is one thing I wrote down here. This we. Fundamentally, can't blame in just the biases. You know, we've got to have some bit of introspective here. Like we're yeah. not uh, the acts we are sending are pretty crap. I'm not going to lie. Well, that was, I mean, we had we had went through we, we had Bonnie we had a through of Bonnie Tyler Engelbert Humperdinck. But even when we had Engelbert, we got zero. Or we got well, we got like two points or something. So we come last. So yeah. and he was one of the favourites to win it that year. But, but what ex what Eurovision expert <laughs> looks at the act of Engelbert Humperdinck? They know the song he's performing and goes. And look at all the other acts because obviously people that really follow the Eurovision know that there's, there's qualifier rounds for it. Yeah, 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 the semi, which I do happen to tune into. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're one of those <laughs> mad people that tunes into it. The thing is, at that point, if you're a Eurovision expert and you've seen all the songs that Engelbert Humperdinck was up against, i.e., Lorene's Euphoria. For it, yeah, yeah. Was, what was 20, 2013, 2012? 2012. Yeah, yeah. So, songs like that. Which is the greatest Eurovision song of all time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my favourite. I've loved it. I've loved it ever since. I it's not it. even a Eurovision song, really, is it? It's, 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 it transcends the competition. I don't know. I've never heard anyone mention it outside of a conversation on Eurovision. Yeah, yeah, no, not, not. I mean, yeah, but it, it could easily. Yeah. The, the time it came out, the kind of like the EDM era yeah. it could it could easily yeah, just slot it in yeah yeah, yeah yeah but the thing is is what expert at that point looks at Engelbert Humperdinck's song entry and goes only love yeah. can search you yeah that's going to be Lorene's Euphoria or it's going to be something because there was I remember that, I remember actually when I was watching Eurovision that year there was a song that came second that I thought was just as good as uh, I can't Euphoria. remember what, what was it I think was I, it quite a strong year 2012 it was it was a strong it was a strong year I mean I watched it <laughs> once so it was a, it was a strong, strong year yeah <laughs> But I can't remember. I can't remember. What, I can't remember what country it was. It might have been. It might have been Spain. I can't. But it was a really good record. Two thousand nine was. It? I remember two thousand nine because they had Azerbaijan had a song called "Always on My Mind." I always remember that. It wasn't the Pet Shop Boys. It was just called "Always." Not the Elvis Presley song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, million, pre- million bands have covered that. No. Yeah, which is a million miles better than the Elvis Presley song. Anyway, it was <laughs> Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, obviously, Alexander Rybeck. We play him in a bit. Um, oh yeah. Uh, we, we're playing him next, aren't we? Actually, yeah, two thousand nine. Uh, Alexander Rybeck fairy tale, but then they also had Jade Ewan for the UK. Uh, she let it became one of the sugar babes, but she came fifth with Andrew Lloyd Webber on the stage, and it was it's a great, great song. One of the only times I remember that we've done well yeah. in my lifetime. Well, this is the thing. Somebody said, somebody said this on uh, another radio show the other day. Is that I Andrew Lloyd Webber's there? Quite a fam- quite a famous figure. Why don't we just put Led Zeppelin in? Like, a, if we just put Led Zeppelin in, we'll win. De- Led Zeppelin, are they all still alive. Well, I know, but what I'm saying is in the yeah. past, like saying yeah, like yeah. mid nineties or whatever, you, we weren't winning then. You just go, well, we'll just put Led Zeppelin, put Oasis in, we'll storm it. We would. Sto- it, do you think we'd actually? But, but it kind of. I, I, reckon, I reckon the greatest shame that Britain could ever face in the Eurovision is if we put in a multinational supergroup band and still didn't win. 
That would just... No, I mean, I then it would be political. <laughs> 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 then I would retract from my previous argument and be like, yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, they just hate yeah, us. Yeah, I know, but that's what I, I think that would be the ultimate defeat. And I, 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 I actually think if we did do that, it would happen. And we'd come like third or something. Something, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah anyway. anyway, yeah, this is Alexander Ryback, Fairy Tale. The song smashed the record in Moscow 2008. Uh, the competition 54th. Uh, 54th year with a massive 387 points um, which was up till that time the greatest number of points ever accumulated that was then right. beat in 2016 by um, by Ukraine's entry uh, <laughs> I've got a funny fact here about Alexander Ibeck actually in his 2000 and so he had a career post Eurovision especially right. in his um, his um, native Norway in 2012 he released a song called Leave Me Alone addressing his real life stalker an obsessive fan from Israel who had, six, who had sent him 600 emails and asked to marry him. The saga caused him to change his phone number constantly as she would call him on every new number and he was forced to stay with friends whenever he turned to Oslo. That's crazy. That's such a far... That's the most long-distance stalking I've ever heard. Yeah. He's right to Norway. Yeah. Anyone Eurovision. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, 2018, Alexander returned as Norway's entry but failed to match up to his 2009 win, finishing 16th. This is one of the greatest Eurovision entries of modern times this is the winner from 2009 this is Alexander Rybeck and Fairy Tale. this is URN this is URN <laughs> Fact or falling, and I didn't do it this week because I've been otherwise occupied. And I, when George said we had fact or falling, so I thought he'd written them for me. But it turns out 
we haven't got that feature, so we're going to have to do something else instead. Yeah, that was Alexander Rybeck, 387 points at the 2009 Eurovision Song Contest in Moscow. In Moscow, right, well, that was that was pretty good. I do I do remember that one. I, what year was it, 20, 2013? Uh, 2009. 2009. It's yeah, a standout out. Eurovision year for me. I don't know if it's just because I like 2009 as a year. Yeah, uh, it was a good year. It was a great year. Last time I actually felt... 100% happy to be honest <laughs> that's a nice way to I, I think it might have been mine as well uh, yeah uh, it was really nice summer California Girls by Katy Perry was the song of the yeah, summer, yeah. Song of summer it was a good year had my first kiss I think uh, yeah I think we were both because we were both the same age we were both, we were yeah. both um, opening up sexually so it was, a good, it was a good time yeah this is University Radio this Nottingham. Is University Radio Nottingham. Uh, George story. Scotland and Damien Stephen the time is 9.28am the Eurovision Song Contest special so Damien, yeah. we've had no British winner in 20... 24 years. 24 years. Right, the last, the last time... Nine, it's, not, it's 1997. Right. Brit you, pop... You're painting the picture, right? Okay. Brit pop... Brit pop uh, phenomena yeah. is sweeping the nation. Yeah. If not Europe by now. Yeah. I did, if that's true. Yeah, even, even the Spice Girls by that point as well. Yeah. So yeah. that as well. Right. Rule... Ru- uh, yeah, I suppose... Uh, Cool Britannia. Yeah. Everyone's proud to be British. Yeah. It's the late 90s. Apart from it's Peter a great time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who yeah. predicted the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tony Blair has literally just been elected as new Labour Prime Minister yeah. a day before. A new dawn has broken, has it not? Is the words right. that he said. Okay. New Labour won an absolute thumping landslide against John Major's grey conservatives. Great Britain are going to the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah, we're going to the World Cup as well. No, that was a year later. Oh, oh 97, yeah. you said. Yeah, yeah 97. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> 1997. Oh, yeah, 1997. Yeah. Uh, Great Britain are going to the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. They've brang, they've brang no other than 80s pop band who've not heard from for a few years, Katrina and the Waves. Why did they bring Katrina and the Waves? They were, they were like yesterday's men by that point. Weren't they, they were yesterday's men. They, uh, the song was wrote in... 90, uh, the song's Love Shine a Light, by the way. The song was wrote in 1997 uh, for Samaritans originally. That would be like if Ireland entered Sinead O'Connor into the Eurovision Song Contest now. <laughs> now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think they'll be do, I don't think they'll be doing that. No, yeah. they won't be doing Although it would create, generate a lot of publicity. It would, yeah, it would generate a lot of publicity around it. It's With just... a strange comment she's made about Prince. He yeah. basically made you famous. Like, yeah. yeah, he wrote, he wrote um, <laughs> Nothing Compares to You. His Her version is better, though, I think. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. They're, they're soulful in their own ways. But, anyway, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. the waves. So, yeah, wrote, the song was originally wrote for a Samaritans campaign, 1997 interview. A lead vocalist, Katrina, of Katrina Waves, indicated it was members of the Samaritans who suggested that Love Shine Light was the type of song which would win the Eurovision Song Contest and so forth. At the last minute, Katrina and her Waves submitted the song with a £250 entrance fee for Eurovision in the British, the Great British Song Contest. You know, the song where they... Like, the they, prelim- they yeah, before. they don't do that anymore, do they? They no, used to, no. loads. No, but I, do I remember when Terry Wogan did it one year with, with when Scooch... Uh, Scooch. W- Scooch, you know the the the, no. um, the airport, the the the, the flying people. We fly. They dress in them. What flight? The flight attendant. The flight attendants, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. But he announced the wrong winner yeah. of the making your mind up gr- yeah. thing, and there was a massive storm about. Oh, is it all pre- predicted and all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already, but anyway, yeah, well. Scooch went there. I think there. I do recall that. Yeah, story. yeah. Uh, it was around 2007 when they had that. They also the BBC. Had another scandal, by the way, <laughs> that yeah. involved uh, children's children's parents right. of producers ringing up. No, no, uh, yeah. yeah, children of producers yeah. ringing in to be like Blue Peter winners. Yeah, I, you remember? I, I yeah, remember yeah, 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 yeah. And getting, yeah be, and getting their badges, and the whole thing was all all done. In yeah, and, out, and, so and Deck were involved in that as well. Their career is yeah. still going quite well. Yeah, well, they've got to, they're on ITV, aren't they? They're on ITV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, ITV. So yeah. What we'll do to, by way of introdu- we've introduced the song is bear in mind everything George said about the background, the theme, the culture of Britain, and Katrina of Katrina and the Waves said to all the Eurovision people, "This is a <laughs> song that captures Britain." today this is love shine a light uh third of may 1997 performed at the point theater in dublin uh love shine a light was 24th in a field of 25 songs uh, of course won the eurovision song contest in 1997 our last ever victory this actually won so this actually won 78 
0.8% of total votes available. The third highest in history uh, in that present voting system. We've got a different voting system now. Well, that was behind another British entry, Save All Your Kisses for Me, Brotherhood of Man, in 76, and also Ian Bicken, Frieden by Nicole, Germany, 1982. We played a bit of him last week as well. We did. We did. Oh, good enough, he left. <laughs> Katrina and the Waves. Uh, Katrina obviously proclaimed the Eurovision win wasn't the only landslide that week, referring to the victory of New Labour. Right. Damien, what's your opinion on that? Uh, my opinion is that Katrina, of Katrina and the Waves... We won Eurovision! We did win Eurovision. This is URN. Love, shine a light in every corner of my heart. Let the love, light carry, let the love, light carry. Light up the magic in every little part. Let our love shine a light in every corner of my heart. Shine a light, Katrina and the Waves, the United Kingdom winner of the 1997 Eurovision Song Contest. What do you think of that, Damien? It's cracking. It cracking. It's a great. It's a great song. It's, it's, it's a great exploration for me this week because I'm not. I don't really know loads of Eurovision songs, and I'm uh, I'm learning, and it's been, it's been a great experience so far. The the Irish come second in that contest. What did they? What did they, what did they have? What was their? Entry? I can't remember their entry, but that was when it was proud to be both an Irishman and a Britishman at the same time. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 1997. You know, just a new government's been elected. Everyone feels patriotic. It's a shame that we don't. Uh, our country doesn't evoke these fe- those feelings well, we're these a much days. More yeah, divided people now. We are. I feel like we've become much more aggr- uh, regressive, which is a shame. But what have we got? What have we got next? Have we got some features? Of what, what song have we got? Next? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got um, we've got Hot Pursuit next. Right. Okay. Who and we're just going to lead us into our next song. So right. Uh, so next, we got, do you remember Gemini? Yeah, vaguely. Gemini. So you had um, with a J, wasn't it? With Gemini, Gemini wasn't with it? a J. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, not like the star sign. I'm assuming it was based on the star yeah, sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, so Gemini, that. you had Chris and Gemma uh, from 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 Liverpool. Oh, so you now, why it's with the J? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chris and Gemma, 
Right, all right, all right, from Liverpool. Right. They were our entry in 2003 in Latvia. Do you like my accent? It's, it's pretty good. Uh, pretty cry good. baby. Uh, anyone that knows this is notoriously infamous because this song scored a grand total of... Zero. Neil Poir, yeah. But this is one of those ones where I imagine it deserved it. <laughs> yeah, it's... I was just about to swear then. Terrible. Have you seen the live version I think of you it? Mentioned when I was when I was putting the songs together, bringing them in, that this song was almost all out of key. It was that bad, or at least it, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see the live version. Terry Wogan absolutely slates it. And uh, <laughs> but but also we did we didn't help ourselves because it was literally like two months after the beginning of when we invaded Iraq. So we did not we did not help ourselves there. I'm sorry. We <laughs> no, we no. did we didn't. Um, right. Yeah. So in the final, it performed 15th on the night. Now, the close of voting, it scored the dreaded Neil Poir, of course, making it the country's worst performance since they started participating. We've equaled that this year with James Newman and Chambers. We've got zero points. Additionally, he was... What was our same tree like this year? Was it any good? It was awful, yeah. Of oh, course, God. the UK will repeat Neil Poir in 2020. Uh, Gemma and Chris would blame this poor showman on a technical fault, Whoa. which she thinks she's completely out of key the whole... It's actually horrific, uh, which would lead to them being able to hear the backing track. That's what she said. Uh, Chris... Combi claimed the BBC commentator Terry Wogan had told them to expect such a result due to the country's participation in uh, in activities in the Middle East. However, the majority of the British media blamed the result on the poor quality of the song. And how was that a shoot? Agreed, it was absolutely terrible. Even if it was a key, it wasn't a very good song. And I remember there was that entrance onto the X Factor. And you know those sort of black boxes you get at the bottom, on, on the very on the very end of the stage, you know, the audience. And yeah. They're, they're played back at you so you can hear yourself, like you're in a yeah. very room, so you can hear if you're in key. Uh, that's, that's, uh, she she sounds, she sounds, I, I can't, the only way I can describe it is just... But every single time a musician isn't as good live as they are on record, they always blame the feedback. Because, feedback, yeah. Um, Belinda Carlisle did it when she sang live for the first time. My, my, my father actually says that was the moment he, he, he realised music had died. Because someone could That's sing. quite a long time ago, is that? Well, yeah, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, it was the first time someone sang, re- sounded really authentic on a record, and then it turned out they couldn't actually sing. Yeah, I think Britney Spears is well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But if, I'm sure there's plenty more where people have. Is Lady no Lady Gaga can sing? She can no, sing. She, yeah, she can. She, she can, can definitely. Really so won't take that away from her. Um, yeah. Uh, so hot pursuit this week, Damien. Who have we had in the past? We've had Rick. The the the. the, the about three times. Uh, we've had the we guy need, from the, the Terminator film. He needed Michael it. Bean. He needed it because he was just. Um, yeah, he needed the room. We needed to fit him in. So and then we we did we did Michael Bean. Uh, I can't remember who else we did. Actually. Didn't we do? We tried to track yeah. down hearsay, didn't we? At one point. Yeah, hearsay. Darius Dinesh. Dear Darius Dinesh with colour block. Yeah. So Hot Pursuit is back this week. We we, we want to know uh, of forgotten celebrities of fallen out of favor. I say celebrities. They were probably famous for all of about two minutes. Yeah. Gemini, Chris Comby. And Gemma, what's her last name? Gemma from Gemini. We all know what they're up to. I'm going to get on the Twitter now on the Russ Abbott account, and I'm going to give it to the okay. give us give us a <laughs> bit of time and find out what they're doing. Uh, failing that, we'll have a look online and see what um, see what they're up to now. But um, I'm going to tweet both of them, see if they're going to respond to us, okay. and uh, we'll, we'll they, we can see we'll get a response and see what they're up to. Well, I will keep you live and up to date with what George finds out about Gemini. As we introduce Gemini. This is Gemini, Cry Baby. Oh, sorry about this, but we had to play it. This sorry is- about this, yeah. This is a piece of Eurovision history. This is URN. <laughs> Awful. And I don't want to cry anymore I thought I 
Cry Baby. That is. Uh, Gemini 2003, the original song contest. Sorry we had to play that, uh, but they are our hot pursuit this week. I'm just going to try and send a tweet out, Damien, uh, as we're live on air. Yeah. I'm trying to sign in, but I don't want to sign in from my account trying to track down Gemini. I'd rather do it. You'd rather Russ Abbott try and... I'd rather do Russ it from Abbott. the Russ Abbott account. So what's his name? Chris Comby. Well, we were doing a bit of a Basilton Bond moment, aren't we? We were, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big shout out to Lane Roberts. Doing a, doing a, doing a secret stalking of uh, Darius... Not Darius Dinesh. Is this Chris? Gemini. So you're, so you're actually looking up for, for the uh, former 2003 Eurovision Gemini live as we speak. He's typing his finger. I remember, wait, I remember watching the other day, it was like the, a post Eurovision thing on BBC3 when BBC3 was brand new and there was a post Eurovision thing. And you well, know, you know, Carrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. Freeze a magic number. Yeah. That got annoying after a while. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. yeah. What was I saying? Yeah, Carrie Grant. You know, Carrie Grant. Yeah. She married to David Grant, the. Um, they're the voice coaches. Right. She's, yeah, right, yeah. Right, okay. She just, she just, she doesn't even like bother to know the girl's name. And she's just like, <laughs> that girl just can't sing. I'm sorry. We've got to do much better next year. And we're, we're, lo and behold, we didn't. I don't think we did any better. No, we didn't. No, I don't know. I, I don't remember the 2004 entry. That was that the Finland one. <laughs> uh, we've got them coming up. No, there. that was 2006. 2006. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Gemini 2003. I don't remember what the 2004 winner was. George is still Why on. am I having trouble finding what they're up to? Well, because probably because they're, not, they're more anonymous than Right, we what are. kind of personality does Gemini have? Do you reckon have? they're less famous than we are now? Probably. Sure. Probably. We're probably more famous off the back of the Russ Abbott. And what, else was the, uh, what else was Gemma famous for? You were just talking about while the song was playing, something that's come up. She's, she's had a bit of trouble, hasn't she? She's got a yeah, well, with, we'll, with, with we'll, the police. We'll, we'll talk and, about that, yeah. And Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Customs, like, apparently. yeah. Right, so cry baby. I can't even find their names. Well, I'll tell you here. what we'll do. We'll, I'll talk. I'll talk us into the next song. It's Eurovision classic. Chris Crombie, not Combi. Right, I'm getting it. Chris I'm, Com yeah, Stop Com getting Gemini wrong. <laughs> no, oh. So shall I talk? Shall I talk with our listeners into the next song while you keep looking? Yeah, yeah. So this is a Eurovision classic. It needs no introduction other than I need to give it an introduction because you won't know what the song is going to is going to play. Is uh, I don't know if this, this is, is the real Chris Combi. Oh, He's got zero following and three followers. I don't think it's him. No, it's not him. We'll play this. This is Waterloo by Ava. This is URN. This is
George Scotland and Damien Stephen. The Breakfast Show. You are in. We play this. DJ! This is URN University Radio. Nottingham. ABBA, Waterloo, the Eurovision winner from 1974, performed at the Dome in Brighton. Uh, bonus fact, actually, Damien, the Wombles were that year's interval entertainment. That is weird. Was it what the Wombles? Was it Mike Bat with the Wombles? Because Mike, Mike Bat did the theme song, didn't he? That was actually a record that was released. Release, yeah, yeah. Didn't they do it? They did a Christmas one as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they yeah. did that Christmas one. I think we played it on our Christmas show. I can't remember if we actually did. So it. obviously, massive song written by Benny and Bjorn. Uh, got recently voted the greatest Eurovision song ever on Ken Bruce's. I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's a bit of an obvious. choice. It's an obvious choice, but yeah, reached top the charts in Belgium, Denmark, Finland, West Germany. Do they not have a charts in East Germany? I don't know, probably not. No, we probably weren't allowed to play it. A, a nationalised <laughs> CD industry, or something. Well, no, East Germany, yeah, it would have just, yeah, it would have just been... We're gonna, we're gonna actually yeah, gonna, everything would have been subverted. We're actually, gonna, state, we're actually, it, we're yeah. actually gonna, next year, we're going to be doing a Soviet show where we play music from the Eastern Bloc. So Indeed, uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll be tuning in for that as well. I'm sure, I'm sure that will be 100% in favour here on University Campus. <laughs> But not with us. But not with us, yeah. Sorry. For some warped reason, it's got quite a popular ideology. Uh, Belgium, Denmark, <laughs> Finland, West Germany, Ireland, Norway, South Africa and Switzerland while reaching the top three in Austria, France and the Netherlands. Did where, you... where did they actually chart in Sweden? Did it not... Did, that's weird. Top the charts in Sweden. Oh, good, 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 yeah. good, good, yeah. No, peaked at number two. What beat it? There must have been something really, really good. But maybe it was like Abba. Oh no, no, I'm getting confused. Yeah, it definitely topped the chart in Sweden. The song was immensely popular in Sweden. No, it did. Right, it did not reach okay, number one. Third time. Uh, they're due to Sweden having a combined album and singles chart at the time. Which that's odd. That, how does that work? So, do, is there like an aggregate or or a, or a ratio that they have to work out from singles to? How the hell? Just God knows. How, but you're doing that in the seventies without computers and you're keeping track of it. Track of it. Yeah, yeah. I anyway, that is that is odd, yeah. but um, and they've got snow. Anyway, yeah, that was Waterloo. But obviously, Abba went on to have uh, an, uh, an illustrious career before breaking up in about 1982, something like that. Something like that. Obviously. Very early on in the eighties, yeah. But the blonde one, I always forget the name of for some reason. Agnifa. Ag- 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 yeah. What's the what's she, the she's a bit of a what's recluse, what's the she? what's the brunette one called? Uh, Frida. Frida, yeah, yeah. Who produced that album with Phil Collins, and there's a video on YouTube of them sort of arguing about it. They yeah, yeah, we're two, yeah, yeah. They didn't really get on. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's but weird when you see that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Because well, you, you thought, like, you just think pop stars would have this thing that they would just all respect each other in some capacity, but clearly. Sometimes it's just yeah. like, there's a personality clash. And it just, you know, Absolutely, one, yeah. One is one is. Uh, yeah, she, she's a bit of a recluse, so decided decided against fame. She had a bit of a stalker at one point as well, uh, watching uh, that Channel yeah, 5 doc, yeah. Every, every time Abba is on the telly, my mum always tells me, oh, she had a stalker. Stalker, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mum used to look a bit like, I'll show you a picture of my mum from the um, yeah. 70s. They used to say she looked like Agnes. She did a bit, actually, to be yeah, fair, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Um, Bjorn, uh, Bjorn, the UK gave the, you, would you believe the UK gave um, Sweden zero points that year? That's uh, shocking. That why? What? But your latest did, set... did we have a really, really good entry that we all voted for or something? God knows. But uh, many years later, Beyond said they must have viewed Ava as a pos- as as a as a very vehement threat. It certainly would have been that he told the BBC because the Brits were the first ones to embrace us after winning, so the jury could have been as cunning as that. It's very likely. So yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Wasn't people weren't voting back. The public weren't voting back then. It was a. Uh, so maybe it was even more politicised back then. Why? What, what, how, how, explain, well, it was just based. Listeners, it was I, just I, based on a jury, wasn't it? So there was a there was a jury. <laughs> it was just a jury back so then. It was yeah, a European bureaucracy. Indeed, not first, yeah. Not for the first time, but that's how they. Not did. for the first time. So they saw it as. They saw and it this as is a ironically, this is about. It's not seventy four is when we had the referendum, wasn't it? Or was that seventy three? Seventy three. Seventy three. Yeah. That's oh, okay. So th- th- this is all that is very. The bad. wheels of the empire in motion. Yeah, and I was about, <laughs> and I was about to say, but Abba was massive in Britain. Well, they were yeah, massive yeah. everywhere, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, every, every, everyone knows. My mum likes Abba, my, even my grandparents. So it's just, yeah, that makes no sense at all. It does make absolutely no anyway. sense. We've got some more hot pursuit uh, coming up. We're we've going, got Plank of the Week. We're going from Scandinavia all the way near the, near to the Ural Mountains now because we're going with a, a Ukrainian. Yes, this is Verka Sudukaka. Sir. I think it's Verka Suduchka. Verka Suduchka, dancing at Lasa Tumbe. Lasa Tumbe. Aye. Um, yes, yeah. this was. Uh, uh, 
He's Irish now. Aye. Go on. Verker Saduker. Dancing Lashertam. We should have played the Dust in the Turkey. Remember him? Oh. From there. That was awful, wasn't it? Yeah. No. Irlande Doza Pua. Irlande Doza. I think we spared the listeners a, a, yeah. an audio trip there. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Let's and just... I'm sure Irish listeners probably didn't appreciate that because it didn't even reach the final that year. It was, it, was a na- it was framed as a national embarrassment for Ireland. But didn't it come like third when they were picking which songs to. to yeah, play? yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, talking of national embarrassments, this song actually, would you believe it or not? So Verka Saduka is quite he's a famous character in Ukraine, a famous comedy character. Right. Well like a TV sort Like of. a TV, okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a like a Dame Edna. Like yeah. Type I can person. see why this yeah. didn't yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway, uh so uh across he looks obviously you remember it, he was the guy in the Tim Four, he looked across between Timmy Mallet and Sue Pollard. Yeah. And yeah. Dame Redner Everage in it. I did watch this video yeah, last So, time. talking of national embarrassments, some Ukrainians and even members of the Ukrainian parliament expressed their disapproval viewing the character of Suduka as grotesque and vulgar. One of Ukraine's nationwide FM radio stations organised a protest in the February of that year to express their disapproval of selection. The invented words of Lasha Tumbai caused controversy after the performance as many people noted the phrases similarity to Russia goodbye ooh oh no so this is this is post and, and orange revolution type yeah, yeah. And, in, and in our classic taste that we have always have on this show we've got a Russian entry after this we have yeah <laughs> and then on. Germany it couldn't get any worse could, in early publicity appearances Saduka explained that Lasha Tumbai was a Mongolian expression for whipped cream Right, okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but, yeah but it's just you, they're saying that they're but. saying that in 2013 uh and that's the thing. He, the guy, the guy who plays him, uh, Litvinenko Danilenko, bought. That's a very Ukrainian name. Brought a Rolls Royce that once belonged to Freddie Mercury, with plans to donate to a museum devoted to Queen. Uh, but anyway, it, there was complete uproar about him representing him in the Eurovision. Do you know where he came? Uh, I don't know. He came second. They came second after Serbia. I guess no one else in Europe would really appreciate. Appreciate what the, the song, the sound of that word meant. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the, the, this is, I think this is majority like sang in German as well. In, in, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Got in a strange way. But this is a, come second after Serbia. Uh, it's the Tinfall Timmy Mallet, Verka Saduka from 2007. Did you know he also, the character also appeared in the 2015 American comedy film Spy? Weird. Yeah, when I was, when I was looking at the, the versions for it. Um, and I was looking on YouTube to listen to it. That was that was the album cover. And I was like, well, <laughs> one of the biggest Eurovision performances of modern times. Verka Saduka dancing Lasha Tumbai, Russia goodbye. Apparently, or apparently not. This is URN. This is URN. Hello, everybody. My name is Verka Saduka. Me English Nikfelstein. Let's. Sieben, sieben, Alulu, sieben, sieben, eins, zwei, sieben, sieben, Alulu, eins, zwei, drei, sieben, sieben, Alulu, sieben, sieben, eins, zwei, sieben, sieben, Alulu, eins, zwei, drei. Sieben, sieben, Alolo, eins, zwei, drei. Sieben, sieben, Alolo, sieben, 
Verka Sanuka dancing Lasha Tumbai. Uh, the guy who plays him claims that it's not Russia goodbye and it's a Mongolian expression for whipped cream. Do you believe him? Well, the thing is with stuff like that, <laughs> it was when you're trying to get away with swapping phrases is it's the context and how things are sung. Sung, yeah, and I'll said. There is a little bit of double sweet going on there, I think. Yeah, indeed. Uh, hot Pursuit, Damien. Hot Pursuit. Didn't manage to find anything about... Um, well, I didn't manage to track down Chris did Crombie ring, or you, Gemma Allen. Did you ring H- Gemma Abbey. What we should have done as a feature is ring HMRC and ask them about it. As a feature, to see what HMRC. Well, yeah, this is the thing. Uh, so, si- wouldn't be a prank call. So. Found some information since 2004. Chris, yeah, has worked at Ted Baker and is currently the company's global retail operations manager, according to LinkedIn. He also still performs music in his spare time. Oh God! And as a he's a what? He's a what? A global what manager? Global retail operations manager. I don't know what that. What? What, what is that? Well, he's a retail manager, so that sounds like a really important job. But he's, why is he a global? I don't believe that. Okay, he st- could. That's according to his LinkedIn. He could also. He, he also still performs music in his spare time. Right. And has an album full of songs on his SoundCloud page. I'm not going to plug him because I've. Yeah, I'm not going to plug him. It doesn't deserve to after his after his causing <laughs> yeah. his national embarrassment. Like Indeed, yeah. Uh, Gemma, uh, this, you'll love this. Gemma is now a mum of three who started her own makeup business in a makeup business in Liverpool in 2010. Uh, in, in between that, she was at uh, Liverpool John Moores University studying journalism. Since 2017, this is where things get a bit go a bit downhill, really. Since 2017, she joined the Liverpool dance group Ultrasonics as the lead singer. They sound like the most cabaret. Yeah. Northwest yeah. Circuit group, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not my kind of thing. Not my kind of thing. But uh, uh, the year before, 2016, Gemma avoided jail after pleading guilty of making false claims for tax credits, a total in of 67 grand. She had also made a false claim to the severe disability tax credit for her daughter and did not report a change to her circumstances when she started living with her partner. <laughs> That's according to Liverpool Echo. So we're not libelous for anything. Uh, if anyone are the Liverpool Echo, it's are. the Liverpool Echo. So yeah, they'll be playing for the week next week with someone. So yeah, I, I just yeah, I, <laughs> I just don't have much hope for Chris or Gemma to be honest. <laughs> well, it's not like they were an actual couple or anything, were they? they were... No, no, not them as a couple. But what? Yeah. No, they certainly they weren't. weren't they they weren't. certainly weren't a couple. No, no, but what I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying is, <laughs> is what talent scout saw him and her and went, "This will work. This will be the greatest Eurovision entry." Who made? Who wrote it? Was it someone like Pete? I was, no, I don't think Pete Waterman. Pete Waterman would do better than that. He would be. Yeah, it's, it can't really have been a Pete Waterman song. I mean, I mean, he did one in 2010 though, and it come last. But they need to get. He didn't get. Did, vision yeah. for Eurovision. It's Russ like, Abbott. Russ, Russ Abbott maybe we're still thinking about that <laughs> we'll play we'll put, should we play Songs of Joy uh, we, I don't, it's not on the system but, um, that's a shame is, but we, 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 me and Damien Damien do you want to explain well what we after, after our attempts to try and get Atmosphere to Christmas number one we're now in conversations with the family of Russ Abbott to get him to perform Songs of Joy at Eurovision 2022 or 2023 depending and it's a great it's, it, it encompasses everything about Eurovision I think that song it's a, very, it's a very unifying song it is a very unifying song it's very it's tonality is, is beyond yeah beyond. it could help us reconnect with our European neighbours after we started doing dodgy deals with authoritarian leaders like Viktor Orban well I was going to put the EU, <laughs> I was going to put the EU in for Plank of the Week so they, they've been doing a trade negotiation with, with Switzerland yeah six years and it's now that the talks yeah. have broken down yeah so that's great but uh, that was one of the, the Troika showing its true colours again. This is the most Eurosceptic show ever on University Men. Not even trying to be Eurosceptic, <laughs> just stuff that happened to come up that, that makes us painted us to look Eurosceptic. So, we, are we doing Plank of the Week now, or are we going to introduce this Russian uh, song? I think we should introduce the Russian song. Because after talking about that, after talking about the political undertones of that last one, I think we should play a Russian one. Yes. This one, this one was one of the most memorable Eurovision songs I, I, I remember. This was the same year as Marina as well. Yes, it was. Yeah, that's a strong year, 2012. Yeah, yeah. there was there was some there was some really memorable acts. This one, everyone thought this one was going to win. I remember this was this came this was like um, six songs from the end or something. And then I think I I think something that really helps acts. I don't know. I don't know if you agree with me on this. Hundred percent. Where the song plays. Plays definitely. But I think there is a lot of manipulation as to where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also to make the entertainment, make it entertaining because you have to balance the crescendo of the songs. You can't have loads of fast sort of like you know Soviet sound of songs like that that we've just played following each other that would that wouldn't be getting annoyed we wouldn't, yeah it would get annoyed 
I'm wondering, we'll have to look up as an act. This is surprising. The has, was like second from last. It? It was like, has an act, act ever performed first one? I doubt it. I doubt it. I very them. much doubt it. Yeah, because you just forget them. And, and they Engelbert performed first, ironically, at that song contest, didn't he? He was on first. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what stopped us winning that year. No, no, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't, but, but it's... I know what you're saying, no. You're yeah, saying. but uh, yeah, this is... Um, have you tried? Have you, have you rehearsed pronouncing this? I've oh. tried, but I'm no good. It's Boranowski Babushki. Boranowski Babushki. Babushki, obviously, Babushka comes from. It's plural for Babushka, which means granny. Or granny, yeah. Or so it's, it's 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 um. Babushka, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that translates to Boravano Grannies. This is the Russian grannies from 2000. Did it come second or third? Some like I should. I think there, there was there was one of the song that year that I remember because I thought it was going to. Some had come second, didn't it? And then we'll, this come about third, was we'll, it? We'll play this and we'll come back to you and tell you what. That so yeah, this is the song. Russian grannies party for everybody. One of the most famous and quite and very fun uh, Eurovision performances of all time. Okay. Everyone loved it. Okay, here we go. This is URN. URN. Branuski Babushki. Branuski Babushki. That was the Russian. Glory to Russia. Yeah, well, that was the Russian entry from 2012. And I was about to say, it was talking to you during that song, that the song doesn't do it justice because it was very much a visual act. It was very much a visual act. Um, 259. And I also, I seconds. just like to say, uh, listeners, let me know if you can hear me because I've changed the mics around because apparently I went quiet. Uh, my auntie, not the Wren, but the Rain. The Rain. The Rain. We call her Lalo. She says, just to mention all good, but Damien sounds like he's next door. Not as clear. Can you hear us now? We'd Hello. Like, yeah, we'd like to let us know at URN1350 whether or not you can actually yeah. hear us. Please Very let fundamental us know. for a radio show. Indeed. Please let us know at URN, at URN1350, at 0785 Let us know your favourite Eurovision act of all time. That would be a good one to know, because I hope I hope there's going to be some sent in that we've forgotten to put on. What's your favourite Eurovision act of all time? Lorene. 
without without shadow. Well, even 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 her even we'll come to the arena, but but even her even the whole choreography and just everything. It's a great performance. It's a stellar. And she managed to sing well whilst dancing very physically. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah. No, and do you she know must I mean? be very very fit. And, but yeah, and trained vocally very well because yeah, you, yeah, yeah. if you've ever tried like sing while bending down, you've down, all, yeah, yeah. you've all voice. I never changes. thought of it like that, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I remember. I just thought it was. I just thought it was. I, I mean, I used to think that song that that whole that just blew me away. It was so un Eurovision that it was. Yeah, and it was the, it was yeah. the end of the night as well. And it yeah. was. And I, I think one act followed it, which I, which had a bit of bit annoying. That, that was a bit like when the the Rolling Stones were known in the US, <laughs> and they had to follow James Brown. And it was. They said it was the worst thing they ever did in their careers. Cause Good, yeah. Everyone just looked at him like you guys. That, he'd, he'd he'd worked the whole the room up, and they were like they wanted more funk and soul, and they would like singing blues, and they just went in the mood. Anyway. So that Russian granny from 2012. Uh, Bravuski Babushka. Watch it on YouTube. Watch it on YouTube because it's good. Watch it on YouTube. Uh, so these these are some of the, these are some of the lyrics. Uh, I'll be putting a white table. I will be putting a white tablecloth. I will be waiting for kids coming back home. The dough is rising joyously, and my heart is cheering. Party for everybody. Dance. Come on and dance. And then it goes on. Yeah. I am going to put. I can't even. Yeah, no, I just heard it. I don't yeah. know why you're reading it out again. No, no, I'm just. Kidding, <laughs> lyrics, I need. Mean, they're very simplistic lyrics in English. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's the thing. Was it was all visual. It was all. Yeah, the, it, yeah. Was, it, was, it was. It was a visual yeah. thing. You, you got all that traditional yeah. dress and everything. It was yeah. a very, very. We are dancing soulful, so soulful. We are singing extremely strongly because we are together. Party for everybody. I've just, been, I've just been asked by a listener if we're going to be playing. Now, if yeah. we're going to be playing uh, Islands Dana. Do you remember that record? Our. Uh, uh, Israel's D- Dana International, yeah. Is that, is that what the listener meant? Um, yeah. yeah, we is are. It, who is that listener? Uh, it's my mother. Oh, <laughs> hi Jane. Yeah, no, um, we have got also got a Jane, listener. Jane, I'm not a bad influence on Damien, by the way. Like he seems to make out sometimes. I don't make out. I also <laughs> lead each other. Getting in so. fights and stuff. We've also, we've, got, we've also got a listener from Mexico as well, so we're actually gone global this week. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. is she listening? Yeah, she is. She's listening. That's she's amazing. Told, she told me she's listening. Um, I, I said, well, I, I don't know what's going to come of all this. Going out with someone in Mexico sounds sounds like it's going to be a bit of a waste of time. And she just heard that as well. She, now she's definitely not going to talk to me. <laughs> this is University Radio. This is Radio, Radio uh, so uh, yeah, so that is the Russian grannies came second to the Wren in 2012. Damien, the time is uh, 12 minutes past 10. Should we do Plank of the Week? Yeah, it's time to do Plank of the Week. You go first, Damien. Well, I would like to nominate um, the Spanish Postal Service. Okay, yeah. So just a bit of background information on this one. In, in Britain, we have you know first, second class stamps. That's pretty much yeah, you know, yeah. Apart standard from, system. Apart from yeah. if you're going into recorded delivery and all that, which is a different thing. Right? There's that. In Spain, they have a four tier system, so you you pay you got four speeds essentially. And you thought you. the European Union was bureaucratic? Well, it's ironic we're doing a show about Eurovision just <laughs> completely. <laughs> well, this is this is enough to do with the European Union, but they have they have a four tier stamp system, and the Spanish government very <laughs> kindly, very thoughtfully, very considerately decided to do. Uh, issue some stamps on the uh, concept of uh, racial justice and okay, promoting, yeah. promoting diversity in Spain. Uh, the thing that they did was they had four the four stamps in the four sort of what you'd say in four skin tones. So there was there was there was very dark skin tone, um, a little lighter, right, and then you go into sort of pink two sort of a, a peachy one and then a pink one. Okay, right, okay. The problem was was they made the the darker skin stamps cheaper they were the cheaper service stamps than the than the more expensive ones and it's caused massive uproar because it looks like you know they've completely shot themselves in the foot trying to promote equality and then they've got a tiered stamp system it, it's backfired on them completely, it's completely and it's, yeah. it's all over the national press this morning because of what they've done which I just think I just think how can you be that stupid how, how can you go let's let's have, I, get, I get the idea of the stamps that's fine yeah, it's a great idea, but what but, person yeah. what person I was looking at the picture that, 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 that the stamp office had issued and I was I, I, and I saw it and I was like, how could they have not seen that that was not going to go well? That was coming, yeah, yeah. You know, people, and people on the Telegraph were saying, oh, there's snow, people are being snowflakes getting offended by this. I I'm not a snowflake, but I thought that was obviously insensitive. And, of course, and, and yeah, just yeah. Look, it looked, yeah. and I, I, I obviously get they didn't mean to do that. Like they weren't trying. They weren't trying to make a statement by what they did, but it just looked bad because it. You've just been. It's, the when thought, you're promoting equality and, and, and it, diversity, it makes you look yeah. thoughtless. And then if you look thoughtless, people tend to think you're not that bothered about something. So that that's was planks. That's my, so that's my first nomination. <laughs> okay, my first nomination is um, Domino David of Maniskin, uh, winners of Eurovision. Yes. 
Uh, I finally learned my Italian <laughs> translation for my name as well from from, from this week's from this week's Eurovision. What, what, what is it? Was, 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 De- it's it Demino, yeah. Demiano, yeah. Demiano, yeah. yeah. So the camera pan. So this is during the voting results. I'm getting those messages come through. You put your phone on silent. I'm, yeah, I'm, sorry. I don't yeah, know yeah. if the listeners can actually hear that. So you, you're, you're, it's, he was the lead singer of, of Maniskin, who was the who were the victors this year. Of They're victors of okay. Eurovision. So the camera pans to him. This is during the voting results. The camera pans to uh, Domino, and he's down the he's down on the table in a suggestive position, head down as if he's sniffing cocaine. Let's let's beat no bones, you know, make no bones about what. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. He offers to take, obviously, there's controversy all over social media. He says in the press conference... It's officially been denied. He offers to take a drug test later on. He passes the drug test. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to disbelieve that. However, yeah. my, he's a plank, he's right. a nomination. Because why would you put yourself in such a compromising position in the first place and track what you know will be vehemently negative attention that could potentially risk your title and risk your Eurovision win why would you do that and he, he, he did seem very euphoric when they won I don't, I don't, and I mean in a euphoric sort of way that you only obtain euphoria vi- vi- we're going up, up, up I can't wait to play that I know, I know but what I'm saying is he, he had they had a euphoria that you could only obtain via drugs they didn't they didn't look, just look happy they'd won is what I'm saying well apparently they didn't what was all that bit about the broken glass as well what was all that well that apparently he was just he was sorting out broken glass but you see his mate turn round to him and looked at him a bit I can't, Damien but he looked at him as if a bit like what are you doing man did you, did you see that yeah 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 like, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what cat. are you doing man because yeah. they were they were doing a close pan of the of the band the, I guarantee the producers would have been saying oh guys you're on you're on you're on telly, <laughs> telly but, yeah, yeah and he chose to do it so so, so many different ways of looking at this there's so many ways of, the angle I'm taking is that uh, I've no reason to disbelieve that um, if if the drug test came back, that he, you know, I'm not going to get all conspiratorial about it. My, my my beef is why would you put yourself in such a position? When I mean, is it an ego thing? Yeah, I mean, or does he just did he just? You must know, like you said, the cameras panning round to you. Yeah, you're watched by 280 million people. BTW. Yeah. By I, the way, I, yeah. I just I, but what I don't understand is, I mean, they said that the famous phrase that when they won was "rock and roll will never die." And yeah, I get that taking doing, doing all that stuff in front yeah, of the yeah. camera. Is that, is that, but he's meant to look rock and roll, but doing it deliberately in front of the camera. Come on, that's just doing it too. I don't remember like Def Leppard ever deliberately trying to do drugs in front of the camera. Camera, they, yeah. They just did it in their own time. They just got on with things. That's rock and roll, not deliberately trying to look controversial. That's not rock and roll. That's still being corporate. Should we do? And they're we, abandoning their own right. I don't know. I just don't understand. Should we do a? Should we do a song and do our other nominations? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. This is one of your favourites, and it is a good. It is, it's, a, it's another competent record in the yes, same right. Yes, this is uh, this is the lovely Elena, and Satellite, the winner from 2010, only the second ever win for, for Germany for after Germany. Nicole in 1982. They've both been young by fairly young women. The, Nicole was 17, and yeah, uh, the uh, what's not the Ren Lena Lena was 19 when she won Eurovision. Uh, but Germany don't do surprisingly don't do very well at Eurovision which is weird because it's an absolutely beautiful country and has never done anything wrong this is Lena Satellite <laughs> I went everywhere for you I even did my hair for you I bought a new underwear they blue and I wore them just the other day Love, you know I fight for you I left on the porch light for you Whether you are sweet or cool I'm gonna love you either way Love, oh love I gotta tell you how I feel about you Cause I, oh I Can go a minute without your love Like a satellite I'm in an orbit all the way around you And I would fall out into the night Can go a minute without your love I have for you You sometimes make me sad and blue Wouldn't have it any other way Love my aim is straight and true Cupid's arrow is just for you I even painted my tonates for you I did it just the other day Love, oh love I gotta tell you how I feel about you Cause I, oh I Can go a minute without your love
straight and true Cupid's arrows just for you I even painted my toenails for you I did it just the other day Lena Satellite won the contest in Oslo in 2010. Satellite received 246 points, went over Turkey's entry with a margin of 76 points, which is the second biggest uh, points yeah. disparity in Eurovision history behind Norway's 169 point margin a year previously. Song was only Germany, as I said, Song was only Germany's second ever win and still remains to this day. It's got uh, a little record. It's a nice it's little, a record. little record. That's why. It's Phoebe's. My sister's favourite. She used to do it in German at school. That's, that's okay. Yeah, but I, I imagine there was an actual yeah. German version as well. Yeah, there's a German version. The other was uh, Nicole in 1982. Obviously, the BBC calls Satellite the first contemporary pop hit Eurovision has produced in decades, ushering a new era for the annual music jamboree. Quite significant. I, it's a good song. Yeah. Yeah, they said that, but what was the 2010 <laughs> winner? I bet it was just some. No, it was this. No, no, the twenty. I mean, the twenty eleven winner. I bet. I bet they went back to it with some some other camp classic Eurovision. Like, yeah, it was nonsense. Azerbaijan, I think. Yeah, yeah it was Which, some nonsense. Also, two thousand eleven. <laughs> Lena returned, of course, was taken by a stranger, finishing a respectable tenth. Is it? Is it? Well, it is well, tenth respectable for, for, for Germany and their record. Yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. And considering fair enough. she already presented them, it, they must know. They must know. They not. They must not. Would they have to go with the same person twice? Anyway, yeah. How many other Eurovision? How many? Uh, uh, blue were that. Blue were Britain's entry that year as well, weren't blue. they? Blue. Well, but what? What? What other? What other? Like repeat artists have we had at Eurovision? Are there, uh, 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 Alexander like, Rybeck came back. Came back. I'm, I'm, I'm wonder if Jedward. Have they, they done more than one? They done. Christ. Didn't they do about three? But if you don't, like, if they don't like them one year, what's going to make you like them the next? Well, year? I think they did quite. They come about sixth or eighth in the first year. So they thought, let's get a better song. Let's and then improve, they put them improve. in again, and they and they didn't do out. They they gradually went down. Yeah, yeah rather than they come it, about fifteenth next, and then by the time the third yeah, time was, they we were, were, yeah, right, no, we're on enough of this. I get the idea if you if they did respectably the first time to try and improve the act for the second time. Yeah, if you yeah. go down, just give it up, man. Give it up. Anyway, yeah, back to plank of the week. So your my first one was. Uh, Domino David of Maniskin. Yours was the Spanish Postal Service for their for their absolutely stupid thing on. Well, they're trying to promote racial yeah, their, justice. Their faux pas then, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just, There's another word for faux pas, is it? Uh, uh, stuffed up is what they did. Miscalculation. Like, mis- <laughs> mis- oversight. I like that word miscalculation. Yeah, I seem to use it a lot with Theresa May in the election. She did miscalculate that election, didn't she? Well, she called it thinking she'd get a bigger majority and it yeah. went down. But because there was because, that, uh, there was that uh, famous uh, clip of that woman in the street, the Vox Pop video, where there's that old woman in the street and they go, what do you think about the Brenda. news? Brenda. And she what, goes, another one? Yeah. Oh, another one. That's, yeah. how, that's how everybody felt. No one had the energy for it. For it, yeah, yeah. Fools. Uh, only the political... I, to be, yeah, only the political nerds had the... Yeah, uh, lesson, yeah, only, yeah, only in the Westminster bubble would they think there was an appetite for another general election. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't excite everybody? Like and it was ridiculous. To, I I wrote an essay on it. It's ridiculous to to think <coughs> how you could um you could present Theresa May as presidential. Anyway, this is URN. And dude, what's that? What was that? Speaking of ABBA, what was that dance she did when she came out? Dancing the, Queen. Yeah, and then did that ABBA, dance yeah. with her arms. I, 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 anyway, yeah. Stupid so, Prime Minister. How did we get onto this? We got, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, rubbish, yeah. Prime Minister. Yeah. That's not off comp. Anyway, anyway, go. yeah. Uh, back to back to plank of the week. Yeah. So who have you got next? Uh, you go yours next. I'll, I'll, I've, this, I've only bought two in this week. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is NHS Digital, who are selling every single person's private medical information to multinational corporations and metadata banks. So Cambridge Analytica, companies like that. Right. Yeah. They're selling everybody's confidential, all of their confidential medical information. And you have to opt out of it while they haven't made anyone aware that it's happening. So if you've got some sort of mental health condition, right, and yeah. it's on file, 
the, your, that data will be sold to a company <laughs> who will then use advert advert revenue to target and exploit that b- behavior in you. So maybe maybe if maybe if you've got depression or something like that, they'll get adverts that will that will increase your depression and make you make you you know delve into your into your mental illness even more. That's pretty despicable. And that's just one example. That's yeah, not exactly, that's yeah. not even talking about that's not even talking about actually, you know not uh, physical health conditions. So this is a yet another Tory privatisation thing. Is well, it? it's nothing, well, I don't know because then th- this NHS digital thing is all very weird because there's NHS digital which has existed for it's so yeah, bureaucratic though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, a number of years, and then there's this new NHS digital called NHS X, which they launched during the COVID crisis. But th- it seems to be in charge of the same thing, applying technology to to health ap- uh, health crises in this country. So they're all they're all they're all semi privatized. Some of them are, and some of the, some of them are still officially part of the NHS. Some are run by trusts. There's absolutely no accountability and no Whatsoever, uh, no yeah. knowledge of where where the chain of command is. And they've been able to get away with selling private all of your medical information to private companies. <laughs> So that's, that's if you've got that's, something like depression, then yeah, yeah. yeah. you're just being completely exploited. Or you've got yeah. addict, addictive personality, or yeah. just any manner of yeah. any they're manner. Yeah, you're just going to get... Yeah, well, yeah, cause, about, yeah. well there's, no guarantee, there's no guarantee in any of this that it's going to be done ethically. And while, exactly, while, yeah, yeah. And why would a, why would a mass <laughs> private company be ethical? Yeah, exactly. Cause well, all, why, why would they care about the man? Yeah. All, all these companies are just going to use data analytics and, 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 and then sell that to you know, actual corporations. Mental. This is this is where capitalism is bad. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And many. It's just. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Mm. And v- amongst various other things. Anyway, uh, my second. Nom- is that. Is that. Is that your. That was my. Yeah. That was, I know it's quite serious and heavy. We don't normally do politics on this show, apart from uh, side comments. Side comments. But that, yeah. I just thought it was outrageous. Like Germany have never done anything wrong. No, this they're, is not, they're not. They're not. Go on. Let's, what, what's the next one? Anyway, Amanda Holden. Yeah. As beautiful as she is, a very attractive woman. Yeah. Where are you going with this? Uh, Amanda Holden is my second nomination this week. Right, what's she She boasted she couldn't tell the difference between saying hello in French and hello in Dutch as she appeared in the final of the Eurovision Song Contest as as our voting person. Yeah. Um, Appearing from London to address viewers and the show's international participants, the Britain's Got Talent judge said, Bonsoir, Ginevienard. That is good evening in French and Dutch. And on a... And although I've got absolutely no idea which is which, in contrast, right? Uh, I've got no idea which is which. What, what have you just done? There? No, no, just just keep reading because I'm seething with anger. Just what? so she said, is that the end of the story? Uh, in contrast, five minutes later, a ten-year-old mannerless geekness from Greece delivered his country's result in fluent English. They just go. <laughs> 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 what a load of absolute non get that woman in a in a rocket ship and send her into space what a load of nonsense a 10 year old boy yeah right okay well I've had enough of that it, it is is a country that's very misunderstood and underappreciated we're going into an Icelandic entry we are indeed I've just Damien just ripped my notes up for us I, I scrunched them up I was just I is was, it Iceland no uh, no yeah right, that's, that's the wrong that's no the wrong. it's the it's the unpronounceable one uh, and, I, and I don't mean this by any ignorance it, it, the, the is ty- it this one there is there is no there is no phonetic translation of, of the name of this band available. I guess I, what I should have done is put it into Google Translate and press that audio thing, and it would have told me. But I, th- I forgot to do that, so I can't. I, I want <laughs> even so going to try and begin to read it yeah. out. For fear so we'll of come back to. I've got a couple more nominations for Plank of the Week. We'll come back. We've to got that. even more. Yeah, yeah. We'll come. Oh, back great. To, we'll come back to that in a minute. But this is Iceland's entry. Do you want it? His name is Dyer Freya and Gag and Gag. Oh, Nam- oh, you have just Magneo. pronounced it. That's yeah, but anyway, so this is Iceland's entry for this year. Oh, for this year, okay. Let's slow down a bit, Damien. Okay. The band were also uh, were also going to represent Iceland for another song at the 2020 Eurovision, right? Called "Think About Things," but unfortunately, could not because of the COVID pandemic. The song reached number 34 on the UK singles chart, making it the first Eurovision entry to reach the top 40 since "Heroes" by Mans Zalemro in 2015. We'll play that in a bit. Um, they finished fourth this year with 378 points, achieving their best ever result since Johanna in 2009 who finished second. For a nation with the same number of people the size of Nottingham, they put a huge effort into the contest, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. People, Because Iceland does look relatively large on a map, but people forget it's a real, the population is really small. It's small, yeah. But, they, don't, now, they don't even have any motorways there. They don't, know. But everyone's like related in some way because they're such a small... Yeah. yeah, they all look. Yeah, they all have. They, a, they've only a, got like a small select few names, like Good Johnson or 
Yeah. The staff's are like, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's an amazing night. I'd love to go, actually. It's just, but this a bit was far my, away, isn't it? Yeah, this is what we should put on the list. Our, our list. Our, oh, our, our list, of, list, our list yeah. of holidays, which includes Ibiza, Miami, <laughs> Benidorm. Uh, where else? Scotland. Scotland. I want to go to Finland. Just, yeah. We'll never I'll go. go anywhere, mate. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this was my second favourite of the night. Yeah. This year. It was it's a great little banger. It's very contemporary. I uh, you was watching this while I was wasting time with my girlfriend. This is you are yeah, yeah, this, this is you are <laughs> Yeah, anyway, this is uh ten years uh by by the Iceland entry. This was my second favourite after Azerbaijan come fourth this year, three hundred and seventy eight points. So what you're saying is it was your third favourite overall. No second favourite because so you, you didn't favorite you did, to Azerbaijan. You did, yeah, yeah. You didn't like Azerbaijan the, who were robbed. You didn't like the winner, did you? I did not like the it winner. It wasn't even that good, was it? It's just noise and trash, yeah. Yeah, and I heard I, we've got the album version to play later, and it's, it's not very good either. Anyway, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. um, yeah. So this is Iceland's entry. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name. Is who's that, Jane? Okay, there we go. It's anyway, this is uh, Iceland's entry for the Eurovision Song Contest this year. Came fourth, ten years. <laughs> We've been together for a decade now Still every day I'm loving you more If I could do it all again I'd probably do it all the same as before You keep getting better It's not, it's not that two songs started playing at the same time. All right, yeah, that, that's strange. not good. Yes, yeah, so that was. Oh, I didn't years. know the song was even going to end. It didn't even sound like it was going to end. Yeah, no, no, that was the that was the ten years. Uh, that was ten years by the Icelandic entry from uh, 2021. Unfortunately, Damien. Yeah. They um, they could not perform live because one of their team actually po- one of the members actually positive tested positive for COVID. Oh dear! And did COVID make its way all the way to Iceland? That's amazing. No, no, it was, it was. They were at the, they were actually at the contest. Oh, so they right. had to play. Uh, they had to do. They had to put out the video from the rehearsal. Oh, okay. Instead of actually performing live. Yeah, instead of performing live. Yeah. Well, that's pretty. That's, it's nice. So they did them. pretty well for coming for. They, they were obviously very unlucky because in 2020 with their other entry, they were the favourites. So. Yeah. 
It's just the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. It is uh, exactly just the way the cookie crumbles. The time is 10.34. This is the Eurovision special, George Scotland and Damien Stephen. Why do I keep losing all my notes, Damien? I don't know. What would, or shall, I talk, is, shall I talk them into the next song, or have you got more Plank of the Week to do? <laughs> I've got, um, yeah, I've got more Plank of the Weeks. Uh, so my next nomination is... We've uh, managed Rick. to fill four links of people being stupid. Yeah, <laughs> be, but we'll wrap, it, we'll, we'll wrap it up after this song, yeah? So my, f- my third nomination... Right. My third and final nomination is Rhiannon Spear. Who is that? I've heard that name before. She's the Glasgow... You would have. Uh, Glasgow City Councillor Rhiannon Spear tweeted after the UK's entry to the annual oh, yes. European Song Competition on Saturday. Uh, after the UK received zero points, she wrote... Uh, are you ready for this? Yeah. It's okay... T- right. Yeah, it's okay, Europe. We hate the United Kingdom too. Love Scotland. Hashtag Eurovision. She said in the statement... I've now deleted this what? tweet about the UK's results in the Eurovision Song Contest and apologise for any offence caused. I just think what she, did was she, sto- she was just stoking unnecessary hatred and division through the novelty of something and harmless and fun as the Eurovision Song Contest. But she's also making her own voters look stupid because she's basically saying, my voters do not vote, <coughs> what, do not want Scottish independence on any rational economic or, 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 gra- or grounds on governance or anything like that. She's, she's saying... People are voting for SNP because they hate Britain. Yeah. So she's made SM. She's insulted SNP voters out of all of all the people there. She's made I, them look like info nationalistic. Yeah, but yeah, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I yeah. don't. I don't care. I, I don't yeah. care if she if she if she doesn't like me because I'm English. I'm, 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 I'm not yeah. interested. I don't even know who you it are. It says more about her than it, it does, says yeah. more. Yeah. It says more about the. <laughs> it's made the SNP look terrible. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, why? And also, the last statistical vote we've got is the last Scottish referendum, where fifty five percent of people vote to remain in the United Kingdom. So most Scottish people don't hate the. They UK. don't. Uh, mind you, a lot has a lot has a lot happened has since, a lot has changed. Since, yeah. But even people that want to leave might want to leave the United Kingdom. Don't do it out of aren't doing it out of a hatred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For some biological. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nationalistic. Well, come on, yeah, man. Yeah. Come yeah. on, be nicer to people, man. Be nicer to people. That's so. Yeah, that's Rhiannon Spear, Amanda Holden, and uh, Domino David. Who was your who yours the the, the NHS Spanish, digital Spanish postal service? service. Well, I didn't check the actual name. Anyway, of Spanish postal so, service, but. Anyway, yeah. So this. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. Plank of the week after this, but uh, we're going to go with the 1998 winner now. And this is Dana International with Diva. She was representing Israel. She was the first uh, transgender winner, which was obviously a massive thing for the Eurovision Song Contest. This is Dana International from 1998 with Diva.
George Scotland and Damien Stephen. The Breakfast Show. You are in. We play this. DJ! This is URN University Radio Nottingham. Yes, that was Dan International, the, the, the 1998 winner, the first ever transgender winner of the Eurovision win, uh, of the Eurovision. Big moment for Eurovision, Damien. Big, big moment for Eurovision. Uh, that song also <laughs> ended quite suddenly. I'm it did, yeah. Scared. And I think that's a much better, that's, you shouldn't compare the two, but I think that's much better than Conchita Worse from 2014. It's just a better song. It more is, upbeat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's more, is that the only time Israel's ever won? No, 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 they've won. <laughs> they won in 2018 as well, again. Oh, with that remember. With that big woman, the chicken woman. Was that the one where she's like shouting at the camera? And yeah, it's yeah. Like it's considered bom, bom. Yeah. That one? Yeah, that's yeah. Consi- isn't that considered one of like Eurovision's worst songs? Well, it won, so. Well, yeah, I know, but there's plenty of stuff that's won Eurovision. Well, yeah, it's awful, yeah. <laughs> this year, uh, present, right, we haven't yeah. even got your time to play Cliff Richard as we're coming up to quarter, quarter two, 11 o'clock. Uh, next song, oh, we're going to do Plank of the Week. Well, we need to pick one. Yeah, yeah. So, who did we have? We had the, uh, the Spanish Postal Service, yep. NHS Digital, Amanda Holden. Uh, Demino of Maniskin yeah and Rhiannon Spear there's, there's tough this week there's tough <laughs> I don't, I, 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 Should I, we, I'll put, you put one forward and I'll put one I, forward well, I'll, put it, I'll put it this way they're all equally bad I don't mind which one wins um I'd say, well, should we try and come up with an order for them all? Or that doesn't take up too much time. Yeah, no, we know. Let's, let's do that. Because I M- think, yeah. Maniskin's <laughs> really big because we are doing the Eurovision special. So, so we'll, should, we, should we start from the bottom? From the bottom. Well, the bottom, I'd say, uh, would have to be Amanda Holden because it was just silly. It was just silly, yeah. And, and didn't, yeah. And yeah. then the second would be the Spanish Postal Service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's pretty bad, but it's not actually, you yeah. know, no one's actually got hurt or anything. Yeah. Um, Third would have to be maybe Rhiannon Spear. Or is that second? No, we'll do NHS. Di- well, <laughs> NHS Digital, yeah. Well, I've actually technically broke this news. Apart, I think only the Financial Times reported it. Apart, so the, in order, in order of hot off the press, no, yeah. In, in order of broadcasters in this country and networks that are media organisations that have broadcast this massive news that all your all your data, medical data, gets on off. It goes in the list of <laughs> from descending order: the Financial Times, Peter Hitchens's blog, and URN. Brand, yeah. Weird. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what else? And then um, we've got um, we've got Maniskin. Yeah, a mana skin. Yeah, I think mana skin definitely. What? Why would you put yourself in such a stupid, compromising and, and, position? And yeah. No one believes him when he says well, it. To, no one believes. Well, he him. took. In all fairness, he did take the drugs test, and he did pass the drugs test. So, but wow. I don't want to get conspiratorial about the Eurovision. But but what if it was all just smoke and mirrors, and the Eurovision like well, it's going to look bad for us as well as a company if you if you test positive? So I know, oh, but there's no way that's proven that. No, there's no way. Libelous, so this is, no your, way. <laughs> this is your. I'm not saying that happened. I'm saying. It's amazing how that I feel so scared to challenge the norm these days because you just get labelled as some crazy not, yeah, person. Yeah, I'm just asking. It. I know, I know, I completely yeah, I get what you're saying, but like you're journalisting, and, you know, yeah, curious, curiosity, but but, but like, but even just stuff, yeah. a lot of stuff that actual you know, journalism is not going yeah. considered to be conspiracy theories. Asking questions, going, why are you doing yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. No, I, I agree with you, but just for the sake of the narrative, we'll go that he passed the drug test. The, the reason he's pank the week is because. Why? Why the hell would you? Even if you weren't doing drugs, why would you? Why, why would, would you, you do why, that? Why would you be rubbing your nose yeah. in broken glass? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, across the table. He yeah. wasn't walking on broken glass like that. And why did he have a finger on his other nose? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. And why was he over the euphoric? The, this is URN, <laughs> and this URN. is uh, the, uh, Sweden. Another winner. This is our second uh, Swedish. Have we got we have. Yeah. We ending. We'll be ending uh, with a third later on as well. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, that's coming up in a couple of records. This is Mans Zelemro. With heroes from 2015, this was a great. This was a great. Entry. One of the probably one of the top five biggest Eurovision winners of all time, along with the Ren, which we'll be playing for you shortly. Sweden, you keep Ma- not the Ren, it's Lorene. Lorene, yeah. It's not, yeah. Anyway, not like Sophia the Ren. Ha ha. Who's that? She's a used to be a famous actress. Anyway, right. okay. this is heroes right. 2015 winner. This okay. is University Radio Nottingham. Domino David from Maniskin. You are our plank of the week. Don't tell the gods I left a mess I can't undo what has been done Let's run for cover What if I'm the only hero left? You better fire off your gun Once and forever He said go dry your eyes and live your life Like there is no tomorrow's sun 
and tell the others to go singing like a hummingbird, the greatest anthem ever heard. We are the heroes of our time, but we're dancing with the demons in our minds. Sweden Heroes, twent- the winner from 2015. Damien, I think 2015 was the first year that Australia came into the competition. A uh, famous European country there, Australia. Like Israel. Yeah, like Israel. <laughs> and Azerbaijan, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, more evidence, and we're going to be giving you the final submission, the final uh, submission that Sweden is indeed the greatest country for Eurovision of all time. Of all time, I, I agree. Although Ireland won it the most, or Sweden and Ireland won it joint the most seven times or something like yeah. that. But it's just a testament. We've played three big songs. Well, we're going to be playing three big songs that have been Swedish winners. We played Waterloo. We played Heroes. And we've got Lorene coming up. The greatest Eurovision song of all time. Of all time. Let the let the world rejoice. The world rejoice. Anyway, we've got next, Damien. We've got uh, the time is ten forty eight. We've got ten minutes left. Well, just to talk about this one relatively. This is this is one of your favourites. Well, right? it's one of my favourites. Not necessarily because of the. Um, I don't remember it. It's not necessarily because of the. I the remember song, the performance. Was two thousand seven? I think it was. It was either oh seven or oh nine. I think oh seven. But if anyone knows the what the epic sax guy is, or knows the gif, or knows the meme of the epic sax guy. This is the Eurovision song that it's from, and there's a saxophone. Oh, and there's a gif of it, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a guy, you know, we, it's the guy from the song. And he's song, in, yeah. And there's a little saxophone solo in it. The, the easiest saxophone solo, my brother showed me how to play this on his saxophone. It requires the movement <laughs> of... brother knows it. Yeah, it yeah. requires the movement of one finger. Right, okay. It's, it's that easy. And he's not even playing a real saxophone in the... Right, okay. You know, when he's on, when he, obviously, they don't have to play the real instruments, do they, on the uh, Eurovision? Yeah. So, so he's, he can't even... Or he doesn't sing. He doesn't sing during the performance either all he does is play one sax solo and he doesn't even play it right and all right, you have to okay. do is move one finger so this is um moldova's entry from 2007 sunstroke project and olia tira who olia tira who was the female vocalist who the lead singer of this of this song this is called run away this is called run away and this is urn urn <laughs>
Sun Project and Elia Tyra. Uh, that was Moldova's entry in 2007. The famous internet meme before memes were as big as they are now, in fact. Indeed, yeah. What we got next? Oh, yeah. We're at 10.52. We're at 10.52. We've got two more songs left. We've got one of the, This is one of the weirdest um, Eurovision winners of all time. Uh, de- heavy death metal. Heavy Finnish death metal. Lordy. Lordy. From Finland. Hard rock hallelujah. Finland, before this, had not qualified for the final in their previous attempt ever. And decided they had... That's quite crazy. Yeah, that is... Because it's quite, it's quite a lot. years of when it, at that point. Decided they had nothing to lose. They wheeled out Lordy. That's <laughs> one with 292 points. Yeah. And usually it was the same number of points that they procured in the semi-final. Terry Wogan... Yeah. We've not even mentioned Terry. Big up we've Terry. Talked about, we've done a whole Eurovision and not, not mentioned, mentioned Terry, Terry Wogan, radio broadcaster legend. The, yeah, the one who made Eurovision. <laughs> uh, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, Terry Wogan saw their win as something good for the contest, although he sarcastically compared Mr. Lordy to Roy Wood of Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> this is... I, I apologise for this, especially to my auntie and yeah, my mother yeah, and also a, to Damien's mother. Yeah, not This is Hard Rock that. Hallelujah, Lordy, 2006. Enough of that. That was uh, Lordy, Hard Rock, Hallelujah, the Eurovision winner from 2006. Terrifying, Damien. A terrifying song and, in it, and a terrifying presence. Terrifying costumes. Really good makeup. But really good, though. Yeah, really good. Pr- prosthetics yeah, and everything. Prosthetics, but, but, yeah. ter- I remember seeing it on the, on the news the morning after. And, I was, and yeah, it was weird. It was very, very weird. Okay, Damien, are you ready? I'm ready for the greatest Eurovision song of all time. Turn it up. Turn it up. Right. Damien, we need to... Okay, we're going to build the momentum. 2012. 2012. The UK is still in the European Union. Yeah. Relations are are dwindling. They are dwindling. The recession throughout the country. Tory austerity has introduced the bedroom tax. Permanent rain. Permanent rain. England are off to the Euros. Again, they, they, they think that they rate their chances before falling to Italy. What else is there? Fun, number one. Uh, fun um, is number one in the charts with tonight. We are young, and was a sight. And I'm in Butlins. At we went to Butlins somewhere that summer. I can't remember. Only for like a weekend. It was rubbish. And Gangnam Style was massive. Yeah, Gangnam Style was massive. Yeah, uh, long time ago now. Uh, but Eurovision that year was very special. It was very special because the greatest winner of all time, the Reen Euphoria. It came late. won the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah, and it came late in the evening. <laughs> there was a, some great acts that year, some really tough ones to beat. There was one that was reasonably early on, and everybody, well, I remember in the room, everyone was saying, "No one's, no one's going to beat this. Nothing's going to beat, beat this. this." Yeah, the song won the competition with a total of three hundred seventy-two points, the second highest point total in the contest history. The song received the highest number of maximum twelve points of any entry in the country's history, with eighteen out of eighteen countries given the. Uh, given the song 12 points. Sweden received 40 of the 42 votes from 40 of the 42 countries excluding itself. The only country to give zero points was Italy. The the Rhine became known to Swedish audiences after taking part in the country's pop idol in 2004. 
competing as the reign teller who and coming fourth overall. One of the first times where a Eurovision winner transcended the competition, he could very much exist within the zeitgeist of the era. Electronic dance music was massive. It was 2012. This Wait, is once you hear <laughs> the foghorn at the start of the record, mm. it, it complete. What happened? That, there's the a performance. Fog, as there, well. the, the foghorn totally got your attention. It came out. It was just the stage was just black. Know, right? Yeah, it was just black. Are you got was, goosebumps? Yeah, I have got goosebumps <laughs> now. The stage was just black, and there was a foghorn, and, and then and are you like, what the hell's coming on? And the moment you hear it, it's gonna be brilliant. This, this is, is the rain. This is University Radio Nottingham Got playing out to our Eurovision special. This is the rain. Euphoria. Here we go. Why? Why can't this moment last forever? Tonight, tonight, eternity's an open door. is now over. It's been a great breakfast show. Thank you very much for playing out to the winner this year, as you can hear right now. Maneskin. Loro non sanno di che parlo, vestiti sporchi fra di fango, giallo di siga fra le dita, io con la siga che...